Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Carrie Horn, author of A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations, and Heart Known Series Workbook, a practical application workbook for biblical healing. In this video, I want to talk with you about something that God has put on my heart. There's someone very close to me who I love very much, and he has is developing a little bit of a reputation in his family for being outspoken. And God has built him in such a way that when he sees that something is wrong, he has to say something. And from what I understand, he's been like this since he was a little kid. And in that way, he's sort of a man after my own heart. Because you may have noticed that when I see that something's wrong, I need to say something regardless of what the consequences are. I need to say something, especially where it has to do with the word of God. And there was a time in my life when I was younger, before I was in Christ, where my family was doing some things that were wrong. And once my daughter came into the world, I wanted to make sure that she was going to be protected from those things. And it was really difficult for me to set boundaries with my family and let them know that these these things could not happen if they were going to be visiting with my daughter. And I had written down, I was so I was so afraid to sit with them and let them know and set these boundaries and I wrote down my boundaries and I sat down with them and I gave them each a copy of the boundaries that I was making and they made fun of me and they called me a freak and they said I was anal retentive and whatever else they they said and they gave a lot of pushback and they didn't like the fact that I was calling out what was going on that I was saying that this was not okay and that it could not happen anymore if they wanted to visit with my daughter and as I mentioned that was something that happened before I was in Christ it was something that I felt was there was a need for because I wanted to protect my daughter from going through some of the things that I went through growing up and hearing some of the things that I heard when I was growing up. And most of us go through this at some point in our life where we have to, we have to stand up for what is right. And the challenge about that is that people around, most people in the world do not want to change. And so they're going to give us some pushback and they may even be insulting. They may even be even be vile or give us a bad reputation or gossip about us or try to alienate us. And they may even bully us to put us back in our cage, so to speak. So I want to encourage you and I want to give you some tools on how to deal with that. Because depending on the way that, that you were raised or I was raised, it can be really it can feel really discouraging and we can kind of question ourselves and wonder are we doing the right thing um there's a lot of misconstruing of scripture and what kindness means that kindness somehow is not saying what is true and not saying what is right and that's absolutely incorrect that is a lie if you look at the ways that Paul and Jesus spoke when they were here you will see that the definition of kindness that people have today is very different from the definition of kindness that they were preaching. Love and kindness were never separated from the truth. Christ, Paul, the other apostles, they never compromised the truth in order to be kind or loving to anyone because that's not kind or loving. Not being kind or loving could compromise a person's salvation or their ability to deal with logical consequences to their behavior. If you hurt me and I hold that in and I don't let you know that your behavior is hurtful or your behavior is dishonest or your behavior, if I'm not letting you know that and I just keep holding that in and sucking it up, what am I doing to you? I'm not being a good watchman. I'm not giving you an opportunity to, to change in relationship with me. I'm not doing my part to love you and to be kind to you. And this is something that God commands. He commands us to be watchmen for others. He commands us to reprove others. He commands us to be honest. Now we have to have the right motives about it. We have to do our own work. And we have to make sure that we are serving God first. And if we are serving God's, God first, we're not going to make 
the mistake of being unkind or unloving because we've already sorted through what our responsibility and our role is with God first. So this is the first tool that I want to give you. And the next tool is that your confidence has to be in God. People are going to respond to the way that you speak and the truth that you're telling in all kinds of ways. They're going to be, they're going to retaliate. They're going to be vile. They're going to want to argue. They're going to want to slander you. But your confidence has to be in God. Your confidence has to be in what he has built in you first. And so the implication of that is that you have to go to him first. You got to sort it through with him first. You got to sort through your feelings and you got to sort through the truth. And you have to receive from him what he wants you to do through his ministry. When your confidence is in God, and what he has built in you, and you are certain of what he has told you to do, you're never going to look back on the way that you handled the situation and wonder, did I do that right? Did I blah, blah, blah? Because you would have taken the personal responsibility to sort through that with God first. And if you didn't, and you feel like, well, did I do that wrong? You can always go back to God and ask him, how did I handle that? Let him deal with you. And if you did something wrong, you can go back and apologize. But everything, every part about us, everything that we do, everything we say needs to be in him first. Many of you know that I raised my daughter on my own. And so when her husband asked me for her hand, I was a little afraid. I was afraid all of this time that I was raising her that I couldn't be both a father and a mother and that I wanted to make sure that I chose the right, that I gave my blessing to the right man. And I prayed about that so many times and God showed me that this was the right man. And so when anything happened, because her husband is imperfect, just like all of us, I never had to wonder If I had made a mistake in giving my blessing, I knew that God had given his blessing with this man. My confidence was in God. God wants to be a part of all of our decisions. He wants to journey with us and be in partnership with us, even on things that you don't think are important. I remember when my daughter was shopping for her wedding dress and she chose a wedding dress and then she called me, I paid for the dress and she called me and she was freaking out and she said, I don't think I chose the right one. I don't think I chose the right one. And she was freaking out. I said, I know what happened. You didn't figure it out with God first. Otherwise, you would feel confident right now in the dress you chose. And she took a couple of days and she came back and she chose a different dress. And she said, I know this is the one that God chose for me. Now that might seem like not that important, but it's important. It's important because God wants to make decisions with us. He wants us to learn how to make him our partner, how to make him our husband and part of every decision that we make and everything that we do and everything that we are. So our confidence must be in him first. The next tool that I want to talk with you about has to do with where we make our decisions, how we make our decisions and what we're standing on. Because a lot of times we don't know what to do in different situations. And I recently talked with someone about a situation that they were dealing with within their family and a person who was bringing strife and discord and some of the family members were split. This one person wanted to take a stand because this person had done some things within the family that had hurt the family over a period of time and recently had done something that they just were not, they didn't want, feel that it was right to continue putting up with that. And in the past, many of the family members had gotten upset with that person, but they would just kind of go back to to dealing with them and putting up with their bad behavior. And then other people would just kind of brush it under the rug and pretend like it wasn't happening and just sort of tolerate the bad behavior. But this time, this person was taking a stand and saying, no, this has reached a level that, is, that I'm not comfortable with anymore. And I can't keep allowing this to, ha- I can't keep allowing this to happen and re-engaging with this person. 
And other members were getting kind of frustrated because they were thinking that this person was being a stickler about it and, um, and so on. And so we can have, in these situations, we can have all kinds of opinions from different members of the family about what is right and what's the right way to handle the situation and what is love and what is kindness. And that can be really challenging when we're trying to figure out what to do within our carnality. But we have a word from God that tells us we have a living word, a living manual for living, for life on how to conduct ourselves and what is good and fair behavior. And the Bible tells us that in situations where someone has sinned against you, if they repent, forgive them. And if they don't, rebuke them. You move on. And it does not help another person to continue to engage with them when they have not repented. Now, I'm not talking about a verbal apology. I'm talking about repentant change where the person verbally does apologize, obviously, but they change their behavior. They don't continue doing that same sin against you. That's not repentance. And so a lot of times you have people who are saying, well, give me an opportunity to show you that I've changed. And so it puts the onus on you to re-engage. What they're saying is re-engage with me and trust that I'm going to change. That's not how it works. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, forgive them when they have repented. So forgive them when they have changed. And a lot of times this happens in what people call narcissistic relationships where uh, the so-called narcissist is constantly hurting the other person and, um, and offending them and sinning against them. And they keep saying, well, give me an opportunity to change. And they put the onus on the other person to accommodate to them rather than them doing the hard work of correcting the mistake that they made and actually changing. So here's the tool I want to give you. In all things, whether you are working with your family members to try to understand how you as a family should handle a situation, whether it's you as an individual, in all things, or you're having some sort of a debate over a particular topic with someone In all things, you should be asking yourself, what does the word of God say? What do I know about the heart of God? And what do I know about the word of God? And then you speak on that. You speak on that. You make your decisions based on that. You behave based on that. You live based on that. And you speak based on that. And what I mean by speaking based on that is I see a lot of people in the world who, uh, who, some people who, I actually considered wise at one time and they're really quick with their answers and they do seem to have some sort of cerebral intelligence and yet that's not really God's value, right? And so they argue, they they engage in political debates and, um, you know, at a time that used to be kind of entertaining for me until the Holy Spirit grieved me about it. Um, The Holy Spirit has a habit of doing that, right? Like at a certain point, the Holy Spirit says, Um, yeah, this is about uh, people being wise in their own eyes. You shouldn't really be ingesting this. (laughs) So that's what's happened for me with those kind of people. But one of the things that you might notice is that you'll see people who are worldly wise or wise in their own eyes debating certain topics. And, you know, it can be kind of entertaining for those watching because you're like, ooh, he just got him on that. Ooh, he just got him on that. However, they never actually come to any resolution. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they are arguing with research and worldly concepts and science and whatever else. But the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Do you get that? The word of God will cut through all of that. The word of God is the final word. And so if you are speaking on the final word, if you are speaking on the truth, the ultimate truth, you're going to cut through all of that, especially if you're talking to another believer. And anyone who denies the word of God 
probably isn't worth even debating with. They just, you just kind of have to dust your feet. That's what the word of God says. You got to dust your feet from anyone who rejects that message. So when you are talking with family members or, um, and, you know, for example, or friends, and you are trying to figure out what is the answer to a particular thing, and these are people who claim to be in Christ, speak on the word of God. Speak on the word of God. Speak about how God has told us to handle these situations. So in that example that I shared with you where this person had a family member who was causing strife and discord within the family, and the family is giving that person a hard time about their decision to not engage with that person or to dust their feet from that person until they repent, that person can very easily say, look, I am willing up front to give forgiveness to a person who repents, who is repentant. However, God commands me, God has instructed me in his word not to continue engaging with a person who continues to sin against me. And so I'm willing to forgive, but I am not willing to continue engaging with someone who continues to sin against me. So if anyone comes to you then and says, well, that's unkind, that's unloving, you're supposed to forgive everybody, you're supposed to, all of these worldly explanations and lies that are being put out right now in this woke culture, you can say, yes, I am supposed to forgive everyone. No, I am not supposed to continue engaging with someone who continues to engage in sin. And in so doing, you will be providing the other person an opportunity as well and setting an example for them of how to seek answers and solutions within the word of God. Anyone who tries to argue against what God has established has no truth in them. But those who are in him are going to take the words that you say to heart and God is going to speak into that because you are standing on his truth. I sure hope these tools have been helpful to you today and that God will speak into what I've shared with you. And I pray that you will implement these tools in your life. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next video and God bless.